Welcome to J.O. Wilson Elementary School's Native American Heritage Month program. There are several terms that Native American people use to talk about their identity. Some people use the term Native American. Some people use the term American Indian. Some people use the term Indigenous. Some people prefer to use a tribally specific term like Piscatawa, Cherokee, or Lakota. Some people might prefer a different term Preferences are different for everyone. What should you do if you want to know a person's preference? Just ask. Thanksgiving Myths Hi Cardinals. What do you think of when I say the word Thanksgiving. Maybe you think about spending time with your family, or traveling, or getting days off school. You probably think about food, turkey, stuffing, or pumpkin pie. You might also think about a story that's been told in our country for a long time. A story about why we celebrate Thanksgiving as a national holiday. This is the story of the first Thanksgiving. And this story usually goes like this. The first Thanksgiving was a friendly meal between European colonists or pilgrims and the Wampanoag tribe, the Indians. Although this story has been told over and over and over many different ways in our country, it's actually only one side of the story. And in fact, much of the story we typically hear about the first Thanksgiving is just plain inaccurate. To learn more about the whole story or the true story of the first Thanksgiving, I did some research on the National Museum of the American Indians website. And here's what I found. We're typically told that the first Thanksgiving was a meal that happened in Plymouth, Massachusetts in 1621, where colonists and Native people gathered to give thanks and celebrate their friendship. Historians, or history experts, around our country and at the National Museum of the American Indian believe that what we think of as the first Thanksgiving was actually an almost week-long event for European colonists to celebrate the success of their crops. See, until the Wampanoag tribe offered to help the European colonists plant and grow vegetables and other foods that would grow in Plymouth, Massachusetts, the colonists were basically starving. This resource also suggests that what we think of as the first Thanksgiving probably developed from a similar celebration colonists brought with them from Europe a harvest celebration. So it probably wasn't a new holiday created by everyone together. The attendance of some 90 members of the Wampanoag tribe, according to the National Museum of the American Indians Harvest Ceremony Study Guide, actually had much more to do with political alliances, diplomacy, and an effort at rarely achieved temporary peaceful coexistence. That means that this event wasn't really a celebration of an established friendship, but a way to try and figure out how these two nations might get along in the future. There's also no historical evidence to suggest that giving thanks was a part of the event. However, giving thanks is a common practice for many Native people and Native American tribes to this day. For years after this event, the friendship between the colonists and the Wampanoag struggled. The colonists were often aggressive and dishonest and didn't repay the kindness the Wampanoag had shown in teaching them how to survive and grow food. And only 50 years after what we think of as the first Thanksgiving, war broke out between the colonists and the Wampanoag. The Wampanoag were defeated and for many years they struggled with the contact from new European diseases 
and as a result of their contact with the colonists. The Wampanoag had to work hard to keep their people, their language, and their culture alive. But still the Wampanoag survived. They remain and live on their ancestral homelands near what we know as Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard and in our cities today. Has this information changed what you thought about Thanksgiving before? If so, how? There are parts of Thanksgiving that are joyful celebrations for our country. But there are also parts that harm indigenous people, traditions and ideas that we should challenge or change. Here are some do's and don'ts of celebrating Thanksgiving. Here are some do's for celebrating Thanksgiving in a way that's respectful to indigenous people and their culture and honors a more accurate portrait of our country's history. Do enjoy a healthy and hearty meal with your family. Try new foods and learn about the seasons in which those foods grow. Take a moment to reflect on what you're thankful for. Practicing gratefulness makes us feel happy. Do learn more about the real story of the first Thanksgiving. Visit the National Museum of the American Indians website for more information. Do find out which Native American tribes lands you live on. You can visit www.native-land.ca to find out. If you shop on Black Friday, do consider supporting indigenous creators and makers. And here are some don'ts, some things you shouldn't do on Thanksgiving or any time of the year. Don't watch movies or TV shows that tell only one side of the story. And if you do, be sure not to watch them without a critical eye. Leaving the Native American perspective out of the story and showing images that stereotype Native Americans hurts and erases indigenous people. Don't play dress up as a Native American. Many of the Native American costumes we see are very stereotypical. There isn't just one way Native American people dress. Plus, when indigenous people wear their regalia, it's to honor and represent their culture. If someone else plays dress up as a Native American just for fun, it comes across as disrespectful and offensive. Don't pick out a spirit animal. The concept of totems is sacred in some indigenous cultures. Totems aren't something that Native American people can just pick. So when others do, just for fun, like dressing up, it comes across as offensive or disrespectful. How could you incorporate some of the do's into your Thanksgiving traditions? <music> Where I know, 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 where I know
presenting my Navajo Nation project. The Navajo Nation is the second the second largest nation in USA. The music instruments are are the drums, drumsticks, rattles, not like baby rattles, flutes, and whistles. And also dancers use one of, one of these instruments, is, it is rattles. Some, some dancers, they use rattles, but others not. Sometimes on funerals, they cover they cover their family member's body in a colorful cloth and circle around with flowers and sing and sing a song. That that's all I want to share for my Nav my Nav for my Navajo Nation and have a good day. The drum is an important instrument in Native American music. The Native Americans use fur for the top of the drum. They use logs for the bottom of the drum. Some drums are small and some drums are big. A big drum is big enough for more than one person to play it. plays the flute, guitar, and the piano, and sings. She is from the wolf clan of the Iroquois. traditional dance are performed by the boys and men. The women perform the fancy shawl, jingle dress dance, and the buckskin dance. Traditional dancers wear long, beautiful buckskin dresses or tree 
claw for feathers, needs animal teeth, quill work, shells, and ribbons. Each group of dancers has a head dancer who leads the others. The fast pace of the drum challenges challenges the dancers to keep up with the beat while dancing. The dancers usually compete in dance contests to win money and prizes. are drums and rattles. Percussion instruments are divided into two classes. Pitch and unpitch are the classes. Percussion instruments is very important to the Native American music. Drums come in different sizes. The word drum most Native Americans use not only for instrument but for calling a group of players drum too. Rattles are made from several several materials. Gourd and bone are the most common material that is used. Native Americans handmade drums are known as shaman drum and powwow drums. Drums are very are just very popular instrument in the percussion family overall. We're going to travel to a pueblo called Jemez Pueblo, home of the Toa speakers, and listen in to a very special song sung twice a year at ceremonial feasts. This song is called the Buffalo Dance. The Buffalo provided food, shelter, and clothing for many, many Native people who lived all across what is now the United States. In fact, there were even buffalo right here in the state of Maryland until the year 1923. So you can see the wide expanse and range of different types of buffalo. So at this time, I want to share with you a Hamas Pueblo buffalo song from the state of New Mexico. I, uh, I... The Cherokee Indians music involves wooden flutes. It also involves a Morocco-like instrument. And it also includes the beating of drums. And it also has the ringing of tambourines. And they also use their voices to say hey uh, and other words. Oh, no, no, no. 